Okay, everyone, now you've learned the entire Arabic alphabet, and every video after this will assume that you've reviewed all of the letters that we've gone over in the past four videos. So if you don't know them yet by heart, try to review them, um, write them down on a sheet of paper and match them. Uh, make sure you can write them in the middle of the words and you know what the different forms are. Um, and just go back to the videos, to the other videos if you need to review. Um, today we're going to go over short vowels. So you might have seen in the other videos that I had uh, put little marks above or below the letter um, and that made a short vowel sound <clears throat> on the letter. So these short vowels are called harakat. Harakat. See, this is the ha, the ra, the kaf, the alif, and the ta. But now you should already recognize all those letters and be able to kind of understand what the word means. Or not means, but um, it sounds like. So these short vowels are called harakat. And you can see on this word, on the actual word harakat, I put the vowel marks on top here. And these all signify an A sound. So we're going to go over uh, the three vowel marks and then a few other things today. The first one, which is the one that you've seen a lot already, is the fatha. And this letter right here, we haven't gone over this yet. Um, for now, just consider this a ha, just a normal ha. Um, it does have two dots above it, and that changes some things later, but normally it's just pronounced uh, just as a ha. So this is fatha. And you can see here that the fatha actually has fathas in it. And it's one mark, if there's a letter right here, it's one mark above it diagonally towards the left, going down. This signifies a short A sound. So that's all you need to know uh, about the fatha right now. The next one is the kasra. And this one is actually uh, goes under the letter. So let's put a new one right here and put a kesra under it. That makes a short I sound, so an E. So, so far we have A and E. That's the fatha and the kesra. The last one is called the bamma. Bamma. In this, you might have seen it before, let's put another new in here. Let's put a dhamma on top. And this is a short oo sound. Now, with these marks, they're not always written. Uh, and that's where it gets tricky. So, that's actually where the learning curve comes in when learning to read Arabic, is that they don't always write every sound. So instead of writing fatha out here with all the vowel marks on it, they would just take this whole top area off. And native speakers of the language would be able to know instantly that's fatha, not fatha or fitha. So um, there are ways, there are patterns to know what the short vowels are on each word. But for now, um, if you read certain phonetic texts like the Quran or old poetry or um, really hard texts that are hard to read, people will usually put these vowel marks on the letters so you can tell what they're trying to say. So again, the fatha makes an A sound, the kesra makes an E sound, and the dhamma makes an U sound, so A-E-U. 
A E U. Now next, uh, hold on. let me give you guys some examples. Uh, you remember the ba? And let's just put a noon on it. So all that we see right here is just the letter ba and the letter noon. So that's just a b n. Now if we put a fatha on it, this becomes ban, ban. Put a kasra on it, this becomes bin. And if we put a dhamma on it, you can guess, becomes bun. So we have, I have mentioned longer vowels in the other videos. We're going to get to that in the next video, hopefully. Uh, but these are the main, are the only three vowel marks that actually signify a sound uh, off the letter. So all you need to know is the fatha, the kasra, and the dhamma. So a, i, u, ben, bin, ban. So there's also another letter, or another mark, that goes above letters that don't have a sound coming after them. So right here, see how we stop on the noon? We don't say ben, bena. We don't have a, kas or a fatha here. So if we put this little thing called a sukun on it, it's just a circle. Uh, that signifies that there's no sound coming after the noon. So we know in all confidence that this just says ben. And here we can do the same thing. This says bin. And here, again, the same thing, bun. So, so far you've learned the fatha, the kasra, the dhamma, and the sukun. So this is an A, this is an I, this is an U, and this is nothing. So we're going to go over some examples. Now if you read Quran, you'll notice the first word in the Quran is Alhamdu. So let's totally load this guy up with the vowels. We've mentioned the Hamza before. You guys don't really need to worry on him, worry about him now. Alhamdu. So again, if we were to write this in English letters, you'd just see the A, the L, the Ha, the Mim, and the Dad. But the marks indicate this is like a little A. This is uh, a sukun on the lamb. Uh, this is another A. This is a sukun on the mean, and this is an U sound. So alhamdu, alhamdu. So that's an example of how these marks can be put together to make words. Um, we're going to give some other examples. Uh, you're going to know all this vocabulary is going to come in handy later. This actually means the praise, the praise. So let's write it. If you're going to, let's see, let's use a kasra. So this is a word, fe'al, fe'al. This means verb. And if you were to write this again the same way, you see the fa, the ayn, and the lam. But there's nothing on the ayn. There is a little kasra here, which is make an, makes an e sound. Fair, fair. You notice in Arabic they push a lot of letters together, so there's actually no vowel here in between the uh, in between the ayn and the lam. Another word that will come in handy is ism, ism. 
This means, when we went over verb, this means noun. It also means a bunch of other things, but uh, for the time being, it just means noun. So here we have the alif, which is like an A, but I mentioned to you that it's kind of an empty vowel. The hamza is what tells it what to say. So the hamza here has a kasra on it. So it's going to be an I sound instead of an, uh, an A sound. And let's put the little I under here. And then the scene, and then the mean. So this is ism. Ism. And again, there's no, uh, there's a sukun there. So there's no sound coming from the S, from the scene. It's not isam, isim, or isom. It's just ism. You just push it all together. Uh, another word. Uh, now that we're on the topic of grammar, is harf. This has a fatha, and this is like the ha, the ra, and the tha. And this is this means letter, and it can also mean preposition. So you can kind of see how the different vowel marks work and how they all make the, the word come together. And it makes you really sure of how it's pronounced. So just remember that it's the fatha, the dhamma, and the kasra. And then if you don't want any vowel on the uh, word, it's going to be just a sukun. Any vowel on the letter is just going to be a sukun. Uh, another example is the word shukr. So ignore this uh, double fatha right now. Um, this is just a sheen, a calf, and a raw. So this is shukr. Now this doubling right here, when you see a doubling, this only happens at the end of a word. And if you see a double fatha, it's going to make the an sound. So remember, if you see a doubling, it's going to basically add an invisible noon onto the fatha. So that's shukran, actually, if you pronounce it. Shukran. It means thank you. So again, if you have the other marks on the end, let's see the dhamma. You put the dhamma twice. This becomes un. And if you put the kasra, let's see, let's put a moon here. The kasra, this would be in at the end. Uh, so if we were to write um, the name Muhammad, So you can see the Bamma uh, and the two Fathas there. Muhammad, and you can make it Muhammad then. And if you have this mark, usually, if you have, okay, if you have the two Fathas, there's usually going to be an Alif that comes after. Uh, but if, let's make this easier. If you just have the Dhamma, the two Dhammas, this is, this would be Muhammadun. If you take those away, the other two kasras would be Muhammadin. And this all has to do with the case of the word in the sentence. Uh, you'll learn that more when you get into grammar. But right now, you just need to know that this, uh, the doubling of the marks just makes an in sound at the end. And this whole thing, this whole uh, um, grammatical phenomenon is called tenween. And we. So to review everything that we've gone over in this video, 
you learn first that the fatha is a mark above. Let's put a mean here. The kasra is the mark below, and the dhamma is the mark above. So this is fatha. Kasra and Dhamma. And then if you don't want any vowel marking on the letter, you're going to put a Sukun. And this makes no vowel come after the letter. Um, if there's Tanmin, that means it's doubled. The mark is doubled, and this only happens at the end of words. So if you had a meme at the end of a word, that would end the word mun. If you had two fathas, men, and min.